Welcome to another weekly Forex forecast, traders. Starting off with the US dollar index, the last couple weeks, it has been nothing but strength as we come off of this support area on the weekly chart of the DXY. Will we be breaking this high here? Who knows? We have to monitor the lower time frame. So if you look on a daily time frame here, obviously nothing but strength. We have had a little bit of a hiccup here though, however, but honestly, we did break this supply zone and I was a little, I don't wanna say surprise, I was a little, I don't know, I guess I was a little bit surprised that we did break it, but sitting right above it is a even better daily supply, drop base drop supply zone that removed a proven area of demand from back, back there. So I think we will most likely hesitate around here, just like we have hesitated around this daily supply, I do personally think this is a higher odd supply zone to see a bigger move off of. Now, if we do break this supply zone like that, then I think it is possible we do retrace back up to that weekly demand, that weekly supply zone that I was just pointing out, or the weekly high rather, and maybe even retrace up to the weekly area of supply. If you look back on the weekly chart here, if we do break that daily supply, I think we are headed up to break the high. And the weekly supply I'm talking about is right up here at 110, right kind of above this hesitation here. So we could definitely see a move continuing up there. We'll have to obviously monitor the lower time frames. On the four hour chart, we did have a very beautiful upper trend line that was removed. And I was telling the members that we had a nice little demand zone down below rally base rally at 103.67. And I did think that was gonna hold up price. And if you look, we just barely missed it, but obviously the demand kicked in and we are pushing back up. So the next thing we are looking to see dollar strength, the next thing we're looking for is the break of this high and the supply. So if we break the supply and the high, create a nice area of demand here, we could see a pullback to the demand zone to continue to go up to then pull up to that daily area of supply. But like I said, I think we will hesitate around there around this daily supply so if you are bullish on the dollar let's say you're long something like the usd yen or the usd cad or you're short the aussie us dollar or whatever you might want to look to take profits as we contact that daily supply or at least you know maybe take a percentage off of your profits if you are long the dollar at that supply and then again like i said if we break that there's really nothing else up here that can really stop price right i don't really see any supply here don't really see any supply here. Do I think we'll just shoot through this area? No, but I think we will probably not hesitate that much to get through it. So the next test is the supply on the daily chart at 104.86. But like I said, going back to the four hour time frame, it's all gonna revolve around this four hour time frame for the time being. Can we break the supply in the high? If we do, I think all signs are pointing to the upside on the US dollar. On to the forecast for the Euro US dollar. You can see we almost contacted this daily demand zone down below. So it is possible we do retrace down to it and then rally. But something's really interesting here on the lower time frames on the Euro US dollar. If you look here, we had a pretty decent area of supply that removed a demand zone down here that was proven. What does proven mean? Well, proven means that, well, it was basically a demand zone from way back here. And the demand zone was respected, pushed up, broke the demand zone and the supply that broke it was this supply right here so this supply is very significant and that supply was removed by this demand zone at 1.08 so i personally think this is a good little rally based rally demand zone kind of a weird looking zone as far as drawing it goes but it is also with the trend as we have a very clear trend to the upside in the four hour time frame and a pretty strong pullback into the zone which some people like that some people don't i really don't have the data on that but it doesn't really matter to me it is a good demand zone i think we will probably react off of it to the upside uh it's obviously all gonna revolve around the dollar as well but if you are bullish the euro this would be our entry right here in the four hour time frame with an entry stop below and a take profit maybe at the high or even higher right if you go to the daily chart here um we have a clear area of daily supply all the way up at 1.10 so we could easily pull back up to here. Why do I think we could do that? Because if you look here, there's not really any supply or anything that could hold up price, in my opinion, based on how I look at the markets. So if we do respect that four hour demand, we continue to go up. I think there's tons of profit margin up to 1.10. So if you just look at the risk to reward potential here, if I just take the risk to reward tool, something like this, stop loss below, take profit all the way up at the 1.10 area, over a seven to one, if you look at the top right of my screen, over seven to one risk reward. If you lose that trade, whatever, right? It's not really a big deal. And if you don't feel comfortable 
just with like i said the entry stop loss and take profit above you could always just go down to a lower time frame in this instance a 50 minute chart would be the best you could also do it on a five minute time frame as well any one of these time frames could be good to look for confirmation and what you're looking for basically is once this zone is hit right you go down to the lower time frames the day trading time frames you wait for a shift of momentum by either breaking a downward trend line or let's say a opposing supply zone gets created we push down we break the supply we pull back to a demand zone that broke that supply that would be our confirmation model something like that we're basically looking for lower time frame demand zones to come into effect and be created as we push off of that four hour demand zone but like i said it is possible we just react off of it and you can get a trade off of it like that confirmation on the day trading time frames will be safer in my opinion but at the end of the day it's a good area of demand on the euro and we could see a move up off of it and if we break that demand zone then i think we're probably going to break the low and i think it's all signs are pointing to the downside as we can pull back down to that uh, daily area of demand that i was pointing out earlier on to the forecast for gold if you look on the four hour chart on gold we had a beautiful trend to the upside that trend was broken as we removed a demand zone and we removed the upper trend line so the trend was broken on the four hour time frame not really a big deal the issue with this is that okay it's great we're getting a pullback and the, and the best thing about that is we are getting a pullback in an overall weekly uptrend but what do you notice on the weekly trend here i don't see a demand zone that's clear until all the way down to 22 24. so if we do see a lot of downward pressure in gold the profit margin is all the way down to that that weekly zone and i really welcome a pullback down there because i don't see any weekly zones here this is what i like to call just chugging along there's not really any clear you know rally base rally demand zones like we've seen here so it's just a little bit tricky in my opinion as far as the weekly chart goes even on the daily time frame i don't see any demand zones here that is very clear to me until all the way down at 2587 so that's kind of the issue we are having on gold right now I always welcome a pullback, but the issue is when we get a break of a trend on the four hour chart, we kind of want to buy a pullback into a daily zone. It's kind of just a rule of thumb. Um, but it, at the end of the day, there's not really a daily zone to be looking at. So all I'm focusing on here is the four hour chart. If you look, this box I just extended, this is a clear area of support. We could react off that support for sure. If you guys know me, I'm a supply and demand trader. And I always like when there's a demand zone right below an area of support. So I think it is possible we do maybe react to the support again, push down to the 2697 area, and then react off that four hour demand zone. That is really the, the nearest and only trading setup that I'm seeing that we could react off of next week uh, as far as longs go. And again, if you don't feel comfortable with just an entry like that, you, we, we will be looking for confirmation in the group uh, on day trading timeframes. If you want to trade alongside myself and the community, join the Diamond membership for exclusive access to our daily market breakdown videos and catch trades like these. Plus dive deep with our full length forecast covering 26 plus markets, our interactive Sunday Zoom sessions and personal homework to sharpen your strategy. And you'll also join our private Discord group for direct access to me and unlock a complete library of A to Z video lessons to master supply and demand trading. Don't miss out. Let's level up your trading. Links are in the description down below. And for the rest of the year, we also are running a 15% discount on the lifetime membership options. So use the discount code 2024 at the checkout on wap.com slash FX telepath for the 15% off the lifetime access available for the rest of the year. But as far as a four hour chart goes, like I said, good demand zone down below. There is a four hour supply zone up here. Um, it is counter trend. So we have to be very, very careful with that. And even if you did take a, a, a trade off this, look at the difference between longs and shorts, right? So if you get in long down here, right, the profit margin to the high, you're looking at an eight to one and even higher, right? When the, when we're trading with a weekly trend, you can justify holding 25% of a position like this and just keep bumping your stop loss up and up and up below zones. You can justify that. But when you take a potential short trade like this, right? So let's say to, to take a short trade here, the profit margin isn't bad, but at any time since we're trading against a weekly trend, that weekly trend force could take in control and continue to push up, which could cut your profit margin, right? So the profit margin on a short really should only be like one to one, two to one, maybe three to one max if you get lucky. So there is a potential trade for a short, uh, potential short trade here. There is potential for it. I obviously, I much prefer looking for confirmation in here to lower your risk and increase your risk reward. Um, so that might be best in there. So again, two options here on gold. We're either waiting for a pullback down to the four hour demand zone down there to look for longs off of it like that. Or if we push up 
break this supply zone on the high any demand zone there would be a great potential entry like that off of a demand zone if we can create a demand zone and obviously i'll have that demand zone on the charts for all the members and again if you want to trade in short maybe risk less half a percent instead of a full percent and uh, definitely look to take profits a little bit earlier as it is counter trend on to the forecast for the USD JPY, we definitely have slowed down here. And why is that? Well, because of this daily supply up here. You guys know we had basically a level on top of level here as far as the daily chart goes. We got a nice reaction off that supply. That's the supply zone down there. Eventually ended up breaking as we uh, came in for a second test. Now we are testing this supply zone. And honestly, I think we will be breaking this area of supply. And why do I think that? Well, because when there's a higher time frame supply zone that's so close, which is, would be this this weekly supply above at 156.07. I think we will push up to that. You know, will we push down, break a low, create a weekly downtrend from this area of supply? Who knows? We're gonna have to monitor the higher, higher, higher time frames, which would be the macro charts, which we're not gonna get into today. But I think that is where we are headed. It's very clear to me we are headed there. Um, we will have to monitor the lower time frames to really justify what is going on. On the one hour time frame, things are looking weak, right? We had a one hour trend that was broken. We created a one hour downward trend. And as soon as we hit this low, we broke the downward trend line. So at this point, it is looking strong. How strong is it looking? Not that strong. If we can create some sort of one hour uptrend like this, where we have a very, very obvious and clear one hour trend line, then you could start to add five minute time frame longs as long as this trend line is holding. But I don't see that yet. Yes, this is a strong move, but I want to see a even stronger move which would be a healthy pullback followed by a higher high which would give us that trend line on the usd jpy now in the four hour time frame we have a four hour supply from all the way back here uh, decent little supplies on pretty large but it is holding right now we did break the upper trend line on the four hour chart but again it's looking strong if we do break this four hour demands or supply zone if we have a four hour demand zone down by here down here that would be our pullback entry to potentially retrace all the way back up to that weekly supply so definitely monitor the four hour time frame let's see if we can remove this supply uh, by breaking the 153.90 area and uh, again if we break that we will not only have potentially a demand zone we can look for longs off of we will have a four hour trend line as well as well as a one hour trend line then we could be day trading long so in the meantime on the yen yes the the daily supply is in control but i am expecting that to actually break as we've kind of hesitated around here but not really seeing a great move down um so i, mean, I am expecting that to break monitor the, the four hour and the one hour chart if we can create uptrends on these two time frames then we could start to add day trading longs and longs with profit margin to at least 156 uh, on the weekly time frame to going back to the one hour chart really quick if we do break this low right here then we will have a continuation of the one hour downtrend that we had here and at that point we could say hey wow maybe actually we're not pulling up to the weekly supply and then if we do that then we could add five minute time frame shorts but we are expecting price to rally up. So keep that in mind and uh, monitor the trends to see what takes place here on the USC JPY. On to the forecast for the GBP USC. I just want to thank all of you for continuing to like the video and subscribe as all the ad revenue has been donated to my local hospice. I do this every month with all the ad revenue donated. So every like, every subscribe, and every share helps as it generates more ad revenue for charity. So as far as the pound goes, I am very, very excited about this chart. You guys know from all the way back in August, I've been pointing out this, this beautiful drop base rally demands on the weekly chart. Not only that, look at the trend, right? Beautiful weekly trend. It broke a proven area of weekly supply with this demand zone. I'm definitely going to be betting that we react off of the zone to the upside. So what does that mean? Does it mean we just hop on long? No, we have to wait for, unless you're trading a weekly zone, which not really anybody does, um, we are, we are waiting for confirmation. So there's a couple options. The most aggressive option here on the one hour chart would be a one hour confirmation. What I like about this is we had a supply zone here, beautiful drop based or sorry, rally based drop supply zone um, that was created on Thursday. And uh, we are reacting off of that zone right now to the downside. So if we do turn around and break this supply zone, any demands on there would be a beautiful, aggressive one hour confirmation entry as we come off of the weekly and the daily area of demand. Why is this aggressive? Well, because when typically when we have a weekly zone in control, we wanna wait for four hour confirmation, but why I don't mind this is because if you look at the daily chart going back to it, 
uh, here in a second, you can see that we have a daily zone in control down here as well. So that's why you could look for both one hour and four hour confirmation. And like I said, the supply zone was formed. It's tested. It's proven supply. We've already talked about that earlier. It's proven supply. So any demands on the one hour chart would be a beautiful entry. If you want to take things a little bit slower and be a little bit more conservative, what I like about this four hour supply, we could be looking for four hour confirmation, basically. So something like this, where we not only break this proven supply zone, look how many times it's been tested. We created the supply one, two times it's been tested. Not only that, we have a downward trend line here as well. So if we can get a break like this, a four hour demand zone trade like that, boom, that would be a beautiful potential setup. And you could also be doing both, right? You could be looking for the H1 confirmation. You could also be adding onto your trade if we get the four hour confirmation. So this would be the more conservative entry like that by removing that four hour supply and there's tons of profit margin to the upside. So I personally will be probably monitoring the four hour time frame to see if we can get a nice change of character here, breaking the downward trend line and the supply zone. If you are bearish and you think, wow, Kevin, you're an idiot. Uh, you gotta be trading short here on the on the pound. Look at the downward trend. Let's say you're ignoring the weekly demand zone. That's fine, I understand. Um, if you are going to short, which I don't really recommend, um, you could be shorting as long as the downward trend line's holding. Uh, I don't really wanna be trading at this very, very tested supply zone here. So if you're gonna short, it's gotta be on a 50 minute time frame as long as the downward trend line's holding. And then if we break it, well, you were wrong. And then I was right. And we could look for longs off of it like that. Um, so again, just monitor the four hour and the one hour time frame for confirmation for breaking supply zones and creating demand zones as the higher time frame demand zones are in control now and we definitely want to be favoring longs and look if the weekly zone is broken here and the weekly upper trend line is broken that's fine with me I, I i i at this point i have to go in long i have to go with it right i cannot just say wow weekly uptrend a weekly beautiful demand zone in control i'm gonna short i, I can't do that uh, me personally. So I'm going to be looking for longs and I'm going to be waiting for the four hour and the one hour time frame for confirmation for zones being created. On to the forecast from the USD CAD, my home country. Something significant has happened in the USD CAD here as we've broken this high, which has finally given us a continuation of the weekly trend. We have been going sideways in the USD CAD for so long. It's been so annoying this this uh, chart. So we now have a weekly uptrend. We are approaching a weekly supply. But if you look, the supply is very tested, tested once here. And I believe it was tested, actually it wasn't. So we had a supply zone created, tested once, almost tested multiple times. Um, so I'm not too, too concerned about this weekly supply zone. Um, I, I think we could react off of it. Uh, we'll have to monitor the lower time frames, but in the meantime, I know you guys aren't really looking at the weekly chart. I just like to give you guys the higher time frame analysis, which is kind of my bread and butter. Uh, but if you look at the lower time frames on the one hour chart, we have picture perfect one hour trend to the upside. So as long as this trend line's holding, you could be looking for five minute time frame longs, monitoring the one hour trend line. That is one option. You could also, since we have a four hour trend, you could be looking for longs on a 15 minute time frame. Now, if we do get a pullback all the way down to this drop base rally demand at 1.38, I think it's a good little pullback entry as it's kind of going to stop out everyone here something like that boom be a potential good pullback entry as you can see very strong move away broke a proven area of supply uh very nice move away and uh, i personally think it's a good little zone to get a pullback into so again on the day trading time frames 15 minute and the five minute time frame it's longs all the way but if we start to pull back at, at, if we break the trend lines well at that point we've got to hold off Wait for the demand zone down at 1.38 area, down to that four hour demand zone and potentially get in long on the USD CAD, especially since we have trends on all four time frames at this time. Longs are gonna be good. But again, if you get in long at the four hour zone, be careful of this weekly supply. Yes, it is tested, but if, if you look, it, it was barely, barely tested. So it, it is possible to react off of it. We'll have to monitor the DX, DXY as well. But uh, in the meantime, the trends are looking strong. So we have to pretty much go with longs, especially on the day trading timeframes. Those are gonna be more favorable. All right, on the forecast for the AUD USD, we recently in the past week broke this daily demand zone. It was a proven demand zone. So this is a significant drop in the Aussie US dollar. We are approaching a demand zone from back here. But if you look here, look how much this is tested, um, even really pierced through. I don't really call that removed, but uh, it was very tested. So. I'm not ignoring it, but it, it, I am taking it with a grain of salt. I really don't think we will see a strong move off of that zone. Um, it's it's a little tricky at this time. As far as trading the Aussie US dollar goes, the four hour time frame we do have a four hour downward trend line that's 
you know, definitely not bad. It's not amazing, but it's definitely not bad. And, and it currently is being respected. If you look here, pierced above it, still being respected. So at any time, you could in theory be looking for 50 minute time frame shorts as long as this downward trend line is being respected. I think that's fair to be day trading that downward trend line. On the one hour time frame, a lot of sideways price action here. If you look, we had a downward trend line, broke a supply zone with this demand zone, had a nice move off the zone initially, probably get two to one trade, and then we ended up breaking that area of demand. We broke it with this supply, which then created this demand down below at 0 0.655. What I like about this demand zone is there's a clear area of support right above it. So I think the real demand is down below and we definitely could see a move off of it. The issue is that this zone is a reaction from the previous area down below. So these zones kind of are working hand in hand, not my favorite type of situation. So you could just be looking for five minute time frame longs as we come off of this one hour, uh, one hour demand zone, which means you're gonna be looking for a confirmation trade. I think that might be our best bet. And actually I just noticed here, we actually had a very, very temporary upward trend line here that was removed by this area of supply up here. So if you are bearish, we do have this supply above that I just drew at 0 0.657. If you think we will continue to go down, that would be our supply zone short up above. So you could even be playing both. We could ping pong between both of these for a while and eventually break down below or break down above. But in the meantime, these this is our supply zone for shorts. This is our demand zone for longs. Trade accordingly, risk accordingly, right? We do have a four hour downward trend. So in theory, the one hour supply is higher odds than this demand zone, especially since this demand zone was created from the previous area of demand down below. So be careful on the Aussie US dollar as we are just going sideways here in the one hour time frame. But nonetheless, a couple good zones on the one hour time frame that we easily could see moves off of as far as supply and demand goes. And make sure to check out the podcast that I release uh, called the Stoic Trading Psychology Podcast if you need some tips with trading psychology. If you want to be on the podcast, let me know in the comments down below. Onto the forecast for the USD CHF. We are currently approaching the not only the downward trend line, but also a supply zone that has been tested twice before. So I am expecting to break for the reason, like I said, it's been tested once, twice. There's a trend line here. I am expecting that um, to break. And also because on the weekly time frame, we clearly have a weekly supply zone above, and supply and demand acts as magnets, in my opinion. So we could be you know, pulling up to the weekly supply to then fuel for a bigger move down. So if you are bullish, that will be our profit margin up to the weekly supply at 0 0.883. That is where I think we could be going in the long term. At this time, all I'm really seeing is potential on the four hour time frame. So we have two options here. We have a clear peak valley higher high, which has given us a beautiful four hour upper trend line and upper trend indicated by that arrow. So as long as this trend line is holding, you could be looking for longs on a 15 minute time frame. That is one option. Let's say we push down, we break this upper trend line. Not a big deal because we do have a four hour demand zone from back here at 0 0.859 that we easily could see a move off of to the upside. And again, you could be looking for confirmation in this area on a lower time frame as well. That is definitely a possibility. Let's say we break this upper trend line like this and we create some sort of four hour supply. Any supplies on there that could be used as a potential short trade if we do break a supply zone or sorry, if we do break the upper trend line and I will have that supply zone on the charts for all of the paying members who get access to my daily chart analysis. So basically until like it, it's longs all the way, as long as this trend line's holding, like I said. Um, but if we do break the upper trend line, don't fret, don't, don't worry about it too much. When we break an upper trend line, but there's a very significant area of demand down below, that is where we could see a move off of. It could just be stopping everyone out, all the trend line traders to pull back in demand and then rally up to continue the trend. It's definitely possible, right? So don't worry, don't hesitate to look for longs in that, that four hour demand zone down there. It's a good area of demand that not only broke some highs, but broke a supply zone, right? And then, you know, if we, like I said, if we have a supply zone here, you could trade in short. Um, and if we do break this demand zone, then okay, we have to kind of re reassess our overall uh, bearishness or bullishness on the USC Swiss if we do break the demand zone. But in the meantime, I would just be purely focused on this four hour um, chart right now to see what happens at this trend line at this demand zone if we do break down to it. Last but not least, we are on to crude oil. Just want to start with a top down analysis to let you guys know we are overall bearish on oil. We have a beautiful downward trend line that is being respected. We're not even anywhere close to it. So we could expect oil to continue to go down. However, we could be uh, when when we have a very strong uptrend or downtrend rather, 
it, it's always possible we do pull up to daily areas of supply. We've seen it happen back here. We've seen it happen multiple times. And there is a daily supply zone up here at 74.70. And that this is the move we could see, right? A retracement up to the daily supply, to the fuel for the move to the downside, and the overall higher time frame trend. So what I'm noticing on the four hour time frame is this four hour demand zone that's in, in control. We pointed out this four hour demand zone many, many forecasts ago. You guys can go back and check that out for all the evidence of that. And at this time we are inside of this four hour demand zone. So we definitely could see the move up to supply. So we could see the move basically from demand to supply from $70.01 up to $74. So we could see an easy $4 move here in crude oil. And honestly, this supply zone above is very good as well. Support resistance trap area, I think we will react off of it if we do pull up that supply. So this demand zone is counter trend, it's higher risk than this supply zone. So if you wanna get along with this area, we are currently in the demand zone, which means you could be looking for 15 minute time frame day trading longs using a confirmation entry model that we've talked about throughout this forecast. I also have many videos on my YouTube channel talking about it as well. So feel free to check those out to get more details of what you could be looking for. And we could see the move up to supply. So tons of profit margin to the upside as we potentially pull up to this week, this four hour supply. And if you do get in long in this area and we start to rally up, just like we did here, profit margin should be taken, right? If we are, sorry, profit should be taken, right? So if we are in long from this demand zone, we have a new demand zone. So you can easily bump your stop loss from here up to this zone right now to see if that holds. Why would I do that? Well, because it's a counter trend, right? If you'd get in short up here, I would give this breathing room to play out to the downside because this supply zone is with the overall weekly downward trend where these demand zones were not. So all demand zones need to be taken with a grain of salt. Look to take profit early. Um, and uh, we, it, the, the near term profit margin is up to the 74 area where we can then get a beautiful with the trend short trade up there. So I am looking to see the move from demand to supply back down again to continue to trade with that overall weekly downward trend here on crude oil. If you guys want to watch the full length forecast with all the other markets, make sure to subscribe to the channel membership to get access.